Hard Rock Hotel. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Christine. I work for Odyssey here in New York. I know that we are all above and below here for the same reason, and that is because we are huge fans of the artists that we're about to see on stage this afternoon. It's about... That's how I knew you'd respond. And first, I have the privilege of being able to have a conversation before we see a performance from Florence and the Machine with Miss Florence Welch. It is incredible how many people have come dressed for the occasion. There is a lot of enthusiasm in this crowd and we are very grateful. <laughs> Especially because I know you've had a very busy time here in New York. It's always a whirlwind. And it's my understanding that New York played a creative role in the beginning of the album that's about to come out in a few days, Dance Fever. <laughs> Can you tell us about the beginning of the creative process for this album and how New York played a role? Well, I was, um, I was supposed to make the whole record in New York. I had planned to record it all in a electric lady in... Oh my goodness, it's hard to remember things now. <laughs> um, I think it was March 2020. I had planned to stay in New York for, I think it was a long time, it was like three months maybe, and uh, make the whole of Dance Fever. And then my mum called me, and she never calls me, because she's very busy. Um, <laughs> I looked at my phone today, and I was like, I must have her in my phone as mum, right? That would be really weird to not have her in my phone. I was like, no, it's Evelyn Welch, why? <laughs> Which is the most British thing I've ever... I was like, why isn't she my father's mom? But Evelyn Welsh called me, Professor Evelyn Welsh, and said, uh, you have to come home. And, yeah, she never phones, so if, if you see Evelyn Welsh, it's time to go. <laughs> and so from there, the writing moved back home for you, and how were you able to pivot? Because obviously a lot of us had to do a lot of pivoting over the last two years. But with the process suddenly taking this left turn, where were you able to find stillness and get a new plan in place? Um, there was no plan. <laughs> there was no plan. It was chaos. We just kind of did what we could when we could. And uh, it's still chaos. Today we don't have a harpist, so <laughs> we're just carrying on where and when we can, and that was kind of how the album went as well. <laughs> the first song from Dance Fever that we all got to hear was King. <laughs> Which in its brief time in our ears and hearts has become an anthem for a lot of people. What was it about the word King? that you wanted to maybe reclaim or subvert or change for yourself in the writing and creative process? Um, it's funny because I always feel like when I try and explain my lyrics, the songs have something to say and they're kind of speaking through me. And if I try and explain them specifically, I never do it justice. I never like... I always feel like I did an injustice to the song that was kind of there. And King was one of those ones that just arrived. It always happened, I was, I was in my kitchen, I was like, I will never write a song again. I don't write anything, I'm, I'm no good. I, I, maybe like all the songs have left me. And then King just arrived like fully, completely fully formed, like every lyric was there. And, but I think the thing that I really like about songs is that they're not statements. They have so many layers to them. And if I try and 
boil them down into a flat statement, I feel like it does a disservice to the song. Is that, does that make sense? I think they agree. <laughs> and they're in charge of part of this process, which is fair. So then one of the other forms of creative expression that we know you love and have missed is dancing. Yes. And now that Free, another song from Dance Fever is in our lives and you share, I know we just talked about statements, but bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm dancing, I'm free. Yeah. How does it feel to finally, after that unexpected pause, be able to be back in what I believe you called the other night at Alice Tully Hall, your church? How does it finally feel to feel that freedom again? <laughs> Do you know, I, yeah, as, as opposed as I am to statements, I feel like if you were gonna sum up Florence and the Machines kind of catalog, I think, and for a moment when I'm dancing, I am free would be a good, I feel like that kind of sums up the whole feeling of um, the record. I was also really interested in this idea of like a moment of freedom is, is also really present in all my work. Cause I was thinking about the song Hunger and I was like, and I only say at the end and for a moment, I forget to worry, so I'm like, oh, I'm only getting like glimpses of okay. <laughs> like, um, so, but really, there's, when I'm performing and when I'm making music and when I'm kind of communing with people, it really does feel like for a second the relentlessness of my head and the anxiety, and it, it is honestly like a podcast in here that just never shuts up. And it does shut up when I get on stage and when I'm singing and performing and making things. Um, so, I think that is, it's for a moment, I think, also I think anxiety is also like being very much like trapped within your body and to dance and to move is a kind of, you do feel this like that you get to transcend the physical for a second, especially with playing. As someone who has dealt with anxiety before I knew how to name it, that song was a real revelation for me because it is, it picks you up, it puts you down a hundred times a day and you don't always feel in control of it. Finding the things we can control, like our movement and yeah, who I... we share communion with, <laughs> and I that's remember, important. Yeah, and I think also, I've always been the same, really, and ever since I was young, I would be just kind of like, a, rattling cacophony but if I put a song on like I love performing but also my happy place is putting on a song I love in my headphones and just dancing on my own in my room and I was always I was always just like at home dressing up and dancing and now I'm just turned it into a job <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> So we've all learned a lot about perspective over the last couple of years, right? And changing our plans and being okay with there being no <laughs> plan, which has been the case for so many of us. And you've been making music with Florence and the Machine for more than a decade now. So you have a fair bit of perspective <laughs> on a lot of things. Are there things you're able to look back on now with gratitude that maybe didn't feel like you'd ever be able to at the time? In your growth as an artist, as a human? Like terrible things? <laughs> <laughs> terrible things, good things, things that have evolved for you over the course of that period of time. Do you know what I think? I'm so, um, I, I'm so grateful to everyone who listened to it and embraced it from the start. And there were always, I think, moments when it's really, it can be, especially if you are um, dramatic <laughs> <laughs> and you like to dress up and, you know, and be expressive in a very big way, <laughs> it can be hard to get people to take you seriously. <laughs> Like, what do you mean? I'm wearing a cape, but I'm still serious. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I think there was a moment um, where I was like, oh, I'm, 
always too much or my feelings are always too big. And, you know, you kind of, you come out when you're young and you have so much um, belief in yourself. And then I think, especially as a young woman, it can kind of get beaten down out of you um, because you just get so much feedback that like, oh, there she goes again, singing about the ocean in a cape. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like, but... And so you can kind of start to take that on, but actually what's happened, and really that is just because of the people who have consistently come to the shows and sang the songs back to me, is that I really kind of, they never made me feel like I was too much or too over the top or singing about water too much. <laughs> like, do it more. <laughs> um, and that's just more water, flood the place, flood the venue. <laughs> Um, so I think that kind of consistency um, is something I'm just so grateful for because I also understand it's like I'm I'm kind of like niche, you know? <laughs> it's like, and to have um, to have had a career this long and to have people consistently always be along for the journey and be interested in the next thing like I never take that for granted. I know how lucky I am. And that was all down to you and the people listening. And I'm so grateful to you. Thank you. And we appreciate you sharing all that you share. Niche or not, there is a community here that's here because of you. And we appreciate you. See? We will. Thank you. <laughs> This man has a crown. He is very serious. When well, I know, and also my favorite thing is that people make such an effort when they come to the shows, and it makes me so happy because I get to look out at my own show as well. Like, I come to Florence and the Machine show and watch a show, and it's beautiful, so thank you. <laughs> But now I want to know as well, I want to be like, I wonder what everyone's wearing this gig. I really want to know. Well, we're, again, so... I'm going to join the group chat. Ooh, are we making a group chat connection now? Okay. okay, we'll have to figure that out after the performance. But we are so grateful. It is release week for Dance Fever. It's almost ready to be in the world in its entirety. We are so grateful for it. And I think... It's almost time for us to get to the singing and dancing and freedom. Yeah. Lawrence Welch.